The tax cut for the wealthy was successful. The tax cut for building his financial economic base as a politician was successful. And it gave a nice boost to the economy because it stimulated everybody who has got money to invest because they were floating in it. You also have to remember that when the government cuts taxes like that, it suddenly is plunged into an absurdity, which is how in the world are you going to pay for all the things that people want you to do if you're cutting the taxes? How are you going to help college kids? How are you going to support Social Security? How are you going to make the road function? How are you going to do all the things you're expected to do if you've cut the taxes? The answer is you borrow the money. Well, there is no other answer. You could cut all the services, then you'd have a revolution here. Right here in the good old USA. They all know that. We don't discuss that, but they all know it. So they borrow the money. Here comes the good part. Who do they borrow from? Well, the mass of the American people have no money to lend to the government. So they go to the rich, who have the money. You know why they have the money to lend the money to the government? Because the government didn't tax them. Do you understand this game? This is a hustle in which rich people make themselves richer. They're the ones who lend to the government the money that they didn't have to pay in taxes. Because for a rich person, this is a no-brainer. Which would you rather be, taxed or a creditor of the government? Oh, I'd rather be a creditor, hmm, which they are. Where else does the government get the money when it borrows? From other countries. The United States is the biggest debtor country in the world. Nobody else is close. I didn't realize that. Yes, we are. And we have been for a long time. I would have guessed Greece or no, something like that. No, not at all. It's right here. We are in debt up to our uh, eyeballs. But here's the best part. And your audience will enjoy this if they have a sense of humor. The second biggest creditor of the United States, the first one, Japan. Okay, I wouldn't have guessed that. Second. People's Republic of China. Who's winning and who's losing? They're the big, second biggest creditor. They have lent $800 billion, as of now, $800 billion to the United States. But here's what I want the American people to think about. If China owns $800 billion of U.S. debt, which they do, then, of course, the United States, as the borrower, has to pay interest for the money it borrows. Which means that you and I and everybody else gets to pay taxes every year that go to Washington where they don't fund our roads or schools or hospitals. It's money that the United States government collects and sends to Beijing to pay interest on the debt. And the Chinese use to develop the Red Army. Do you understand? All of this has to happen beneath the surface. Because if Americans understood what, what I just said, they would realize that beneath all the the reality is, is the opposite. The Chinese, for their part, understand that by lending that money to the government of the United States, they are funding the American support for Ukraine, even as the Chinese are on the Russian side in that same war. You understand? That's the reality of the, of the economic of capitalism. Now, back to this Trump thing. The war against China was intended to slow its development. It failed. It was designed to get a different politics in China. It failed. In fact, everything it was designed to do, it failed. It didn't do anything. China is still growing faster than the United States, pretty much by the same margin, uh, margin two to three times faster, not close. So there was a big program and 
It was a bust, a 100% bust. The tragedy of Biden and of the Democrats is that they don't have the power or the commitment to do anything, even about these two things. They, they basically continued the anti-China economic warfare. It varied a bit, maybe a little less intense, but pretty much the same. And they have not undone that tax cut. They promised to do it, but they haven't. And Kamala Harris suggests she will, but she wobbles. And my guess is you won't do much. There'll be a, excuse me, a compromise, which is what they call it. Because there isn't yet, although it may materialize at any moment, the pressure that'll blow all this up. And that pressure is the gap between all the discourse over here and the, and the bubbling reality below.